John Fort with a special uh, Today conversation with Michael Dell. We just had it yesterday, and I'm going to be live commenting throughout. Here is my conversation with Michael Dell on his book out this week, Play Nice But Win. Michael Dell, good to see you. Great to be with you, John. Uh, great to have you back on Fort Knox. I got your book here, Play Nice But Win, uh, out this week. And um, I want to dive right into talking about it. The, the thread that runs through this book is a story of how you almost lost Dell in 2013. And to me, it's a uh, pivotal moment because um, it's like a moment in the Dell turnaround after you came back in, uh, as CEO like 15 years ago. Um, tell me why that moment, that um, taking Dell private uh, w was a pivotal way for you to get to this story. Well, as, as you said, it was a it was a uh, important moment and it was really the kickoff of an acceleration of the transformation of the company. And, you know, uh, we had uh, started down the path, you know, in kind of the late 2000s and acquired some other companies. We were organically investing and. You know, what we found is the more we did that, the, the less the market kind of liked it. And at that time, you know, being a public company was kind of rate limiting for us. And so, you know, we made the decision to go forward with this uh, buyback, buying back all the shares and uh, becoming a private company once again to accelerate the, the transformation. It turned out to be way more difficult than I thought. And, uh, you know, obviously we have Carl Icahn to uh, <laughs> blame or thank for that and talk, talk about that all in, in, in the book and, and the, the challenges and, and kind of what we did. And I also, uh, you know, intermix, uh, you know, earlier uh, stories and lessons, both from my childhood and the beginning uh, days of the company. You do indeed, and um, let's talk a little bit about that. I kind of, I kind of want to see you while we're talking. So during this Fort Knox section, um, we'll switch it up uh, a little bit. Um, so uh, you talk about your attitude a bit in uh, in high school and your entrepreneurialism, and uh, that that comes across in some interesting ways. When you reflect on your mindset during that period. Um, is it is it still relevant to your personality? Today? How much do you think you've changed? You know, I I, I still feel uh, a lot like the same person, <laughs> at least to me. I mean, certainly you live and learn and take on new experiences, and you know, kind of learn to be a bit more thoughtful and reflective and appreciative of things around you. Um, but you know, I'm still uh, very curious and I love technology and, you know, uh, excited by the possibilities of technology and I love business. And, and that's, that's kind of who I was as a, as a, you know, child really. <laughs> and uh, I talk about all that and, and talk about really where it came from. I think my, my parents uh, instilled that in me and certainly didn't squash it. They let my curiosities run, which was great because they could have easily just said, no, don't do that or uh, <laughs> something else. And so I was really fortunate to have great parents and a supportive environment. And, you know, I was I was lucky to be uh, starting out at the dawn of the microprocessor age and find a Byte magazine and be in the right uh, public junior high school where there was a teletype terminal and, uh, you know, be exposed to all of that at a time when when uh, I was super ready for it. Uh, another thing that comes up often um, is that the popular narrative isn't always the right narrative, whether it's about what was happening with Dell's go private, whether it was about the PC businesses prospects when people were looking at that, you know, eight, 10 years ago. How do you uh, look at popular narratives why do you think they're so often wrong? I don't know if they're wrong in the technology industry more th th than other places. Well, you, you, you make a, a really good observation. And certainly, I think 
a lot of my success has been looking at things from a different and fresh perspective. This is one of the benefits that uh, young people have when they're, when they're starting out and, you know, uh, starting new companies. And look, you have to be a bit of a, of a deviant and a rule breaker and willing to do things that, uh, you know, don't really exactly uh, play by the rules, right. To, you know, drop out of college and, and start a company. Uh, but look, I think, you know, if everybody believes something is true, that doesn't make it true. Right. And, and, uh, uh, you know, I've I've used uh, a fresh perspective and a and a unique insight uh, you know, many many times in, in in my life to to great benefit. And, and certainly, you know, the the, the book talks about a, a, a number of examples like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm not one to to follow the crowd. <laughs> How much did you have the big picture, long-term vision of what tel Dell Technologies was going to become when you embarked on the go private. Um, to me, it's one of the uh, most amazing, I, I would call it a trust game, but it was more like a risk game that you played. Uh, you know, acquiring EMC, VMware, other pieces, and, and still managing to uh, play scale in, in enterprise, but do it from a software perspective, doing it from a service and cloud perspective that just, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know if it was possible to draw the line from where you started to where you ended up, but is that something that you had in mind at all? Well, let's remember that, you know, when you in, endeavor to, uh, or, or when a company, uh, you know, uh, starts on a go private, effectively it's for sale. Anybody can buy it if they're willing to pay one penny more than, than the next person. And ultimately it was uh, me and Silver Lake that ended up buying the company, but it could have, could have gone a, a different way. You know, as I talk about in the book, we had had a relationship with EMC and VMware that actually dated back to 2001. And we dreamed of combining together back in 2008, 2009, the great financial crisis sort of put a big quash on that. Uh, but, you know, did I know all that was going to happen, you know, after we went private? No, absolutely not. I mean, it was it was kind of a dream and an idea. And as the go private uh, really uh, got off to a great start, I mean, we were paying down debt at a furious rate, uh, investing heavily in R&D and sales. And you know, after 18 months, our net debt was effectively zero, which was pretty incredible, given that it was the largest LBO ever in technology. Um, so again, I think, as you said, uh, a unique insight, uh, you know, a lot of people looked at the public cloud and they said, oh, well, VMware, uh, EMC, they're all done because everything's going to the public cloud. Well, it turns out that that's, you know, another piece of conventional wisdom that wasn't right. And, uh, you know, th there, there was an opportunity there. And, it's rare that you get a chance to combine the number one companies in so many sectors. And we knew it would work well. We didn't know how well, you know, we've added roughly $30 billion in organic revenue since the combination over, you know, over 50 billion in revenue this, this uh, first half of the year up 15% uh, in the second quarter. So feeling great about things. And, and certainly we have, tremendous capabilities that we never had before, and we're continuing to invest to, to build more. Uh, this week, it's been uh, 10 years since uh, the world, since the industry lost Steve Jobs. One of the popular narratives set you two up as rivals, as enemies, and even went so far as to try to contrast everything about you. Right. Like if you were successful, then he had to be failing is if he was innovating, then you had to not be. Um, how do you frame the significance of uh, Steve Jobs? You talk about him um, throughout the book, early in the book as an inspiration to you as a budding entrepreneur. Um, and, you know, you've got photos in the book of, of the two of you enjoying some time. I think it's in 2007. Um, what, what was his significance and um, uh, to what, what what's the right narrative you think in the relationship between the two of you? Well, you know, when, when I first uh, saw Steve speak in, in person, uh, it was 1980 
I was, I was uh, 15 years old and, you know, he was mesmerizing and uh, you know, the vision that he laid out for Apple and the personal computer was incredibly powerful. And um, yeah, I did get to know him. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, I, I, I uh, said some things that, that I, 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 uh, you know, well, I described it in the book in great detail. So I'll, you I'll did the, the whole, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and look, I, I think, uh, I think, you know, these things get, get, uh, made out to be, uh, they take on a life of their own, uh, but, but the reality is that, uh, you know, uh, Steve and I, uh, were able to, to be friends and, and, uh, and, and, and good friends. And, you know, he, his birthday was uh, one day uh, after mine, and we had a, a, a shared love for a particular uh, place in the middle of the, of the Pacific Ocean, <laughs> and uh, we would often find ourselves there on our on our birthdays, and you know spend spend time together and go go on long walks and and talk about technology and the world and our kids, and you know he was a singular force. Obviously, uh, you know now you've got roughly 5 billion people in the world connected, carrying little computers around with them. And uh, it, it's amazing what's, what's occurred, uh, you know, uh, because of his, his insistence and vision and, and, uh, and, and focus. Um, so, you know, I don't think, I don't think it'll be another Steve Jobs. Um, tell me something that you guys have in common. Um, and maybe this is a string of things, not only founding something, but in, in various ways, stepping away from leadership of it, uh, in, in his case, being forced away from uh, leadership of it, and then coming back and fighting for its survival against a popular idea that it's impossible. Uh, and and you, you, of course, unravel this and expound upon it in the book in various ways, but this still for, for me, is there anything you can compare that to the fighting for the survival of something uh, with which you are just absolutely identified? Um, is, is there anything else like that? I'm not sure there is. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I'll care about this company after, after I'm gone, if, if it's possible. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I was deeply passionate and am deeply passionate about the role the the company has in the world, and you know, I believed in the company, and uh, you know, others didn't. Uh, that turned out to be a great opportunity to uh, accelerate our vision and and transformation. And um, you know, I, I do mention in the book, you know, I felt in 2012 that our public shareholders kind of abandoned us and, you know, didn't really understand what the company was doing. And that was incredibly frustrating, but ultimately it, it uh, set up the conditions, you know, by which uh, we could accelerate the transformation. I have learned in, you know, the hard way, I guess, through being wrong uh, in my roughly 20 years of covering technology, uh, not to subscribe to the popular narratives and not to count companies and leaders out. Um, is there a popular narrative today in technology that you are specifically skeptical of? You know, um, I'll, I'll, you know, some, some of those insights are actually worth a, a lot, John. And, uh, I, you know, I, I'll, I'll, I'll keep those to myself All right. <laughs> for, 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 for the benefit of our, of, of our shareholders, so let's put it that way. Um, but yeah, it's 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 really hard to uh, run up against those narratives um, that that are super popular. I mean, certainly, um, I think people are starting to understand that it's not the public cloud, uh, you know, only right. It's multi-cloud today. VMware is having its VMworld conference, talking all about cross cloud services. There's enormous growth at the edge. I think everyone is starting to understand that distributed computing will be even more distributed in the future. And that's going to mean, and, and certainly, you know, when we look at our business and the growth in our cloud infrastructure, uh, it's, it's quite robust. 
So, uh, you know, that, that was a narrative, maybe it's still out there for all I know. Uh, but you know, we're, we're, we're growing nicely in, in, in the face of it. It is. It's still out there. Um, you know, some of us have caught on that it's not uh, all, all that it's cracked up to be, but it's still very much out there. Um, your partnership, let me call it, uh, with your wife. You, you have wedding photo in there. I, I think you talk about uh, your wife being um, more than um, more than a personal partner, but also uh, having business insight. Tell me about that relationship over time as it relates to Dell the business and uh, the, the kind of communication that has been important for you to have with your life partner. Well, she's not only my life partner, but my thought partner. And, you know, as, as I went through all of these various uh, challenges and opportunities, she's been right there with me, you know, kind of thinking through all the various alternatives and, you know, knowing a lot of the people and having, uh, I would say, much deeper insights into in, 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 into into people than than I, you know, sort of naturally have. Really. So, you know, in many ways, she's kind of a secret weapon here uh, because uh, you know she she can understand people, you know, much much better than than than, than I can, and that also understanding the business context and what we're trying to achieve. Uh, you know, I couldn't couldn't have asked for a better partner for 32 years uh, now. Tell me more about that and the cases in which you've needed to understand people at a deeper level. There's a lot of talk these days about soft skills, especially during a pandemic when so many of the in-person tools that we use around body language uh, and and kind of unofficial hallway conversation aren't available to us. Uh, how has that been useful to you and having uh, a life partner and thought per partner who's skilled in that area been useful to you? Well, you know, what, what also comes to mind in this, in this context, John, is back in the 2015, 2016 timeframe when we were combining with EMC and VMware there were a bunch of executives that we needed to uh, sort of get to know and understand and figure out who's going to be committed and who's not. And I'll just say, you know, Susan had uh, incredible uh, insights into, into, in, into people uh, spending a little bit of time with them with, 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 with me, of course. And, and uh, that, that is super helpful, but, you know, during this last 18 months, you know, as a company, we we led with our culture of optimism, woke up every day and said, all right, what's the most correct thing to be doing right now to uh, protect our people and to, uh, you know, make, make sure we're we're doing doing the right things here. And there again, Susan, Susan provided a, a great sounding board and, you know, great, great perspectives and insights. Now, let me ask you about calling audibles. I remember a time, uh, you were private, you and I were uh, talking as we do, doing interviews, and I asked you about going public, and you were like, nah, I'm never gonna do that again. <laughs> and then, <laughs> a bit later, you, you go public. I mean, great. Um, it, is, it is often said that uh, you, you gotta make the best decision based on the information uh, available at the time and be willing to change your mind. What really was your thought process from uh, public to private when you had, as you mentioned, shareholders that didn't believe in you and that was difficult, back to public again and, and having to deal with those narratives and those shareholders who, who might not have the same commitment to long-term vision that you do. Yeah, well, first of all, you know, I think uh, uh, an open mind you know, works a lot better <laughs> than a closed one. And uh, we talked a little bit about the 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 go the go private. You know, after we had done the largest merger acquisition in technology, we had a complicated structure, as you know, and we had a lot of debt, and it became time to really simplify all of that. And the best way to do that was to go public and you know create one class of shares for all of our shareholders. Uh, 
just a few days ago, we got a double notch upgrade from S&P back to investment grade, which kind of shows the incredible progress and journey over the last eight years. And uh, yeah, feel, feel great that we've not only transformed the company, but reignited the entrepreneurial engine and spirit that was so important in uh, causing us to 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 want to go private. So yeah, you know, I feel great about where, where where you know where we are. But a, a, as you said, you know you have to uh, take in all the information and be willing to to make adjustments. And then uh, finally, for this portion, um, you think you got another book in you? Yeah, ask ask me in twenty or so years. I mean, the first book was in nineteen ninety eight. So you know, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not pumping out books. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you know, like Stephen King. So th this, this is, uh, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, expect one anytime soon. Might not be Stephen King, but this one does have a few thriller elements, though. We do know, at least in this portion, how it ends. Michael Dell, thank you for joining me for Fort Knox. Thank you so much, John. Great to be with you. And thanks once again uh, to Michael Dell for that conversation. Uh, feel free to share it. His book, once again, Play Nice But Win, is out this week. Thank you for joining me for Fort Knox. See you again soon.